Professor Francis Anthony Boyle is a leading American expert in international law. He's responsible for drafting the Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act of 89, the American Implementing Legislation for the 72 Biological Weapons Convention. He served on the board of directors of Amnesty International and represented Bosnia and Herzegovina at the World Court. He serves as a legal advisor to Palestinian delegation of the Middle East Peace Negotiations from 91 to 93. 2007, he delivered the Bertrand Russell Peace Lectures. Professor Boyle teaches international law, University of Illinois, um, Champaign, and is author of a whole bunch of books um, dealing with genocide, dealing with international law, you name it. He holds a doctor of law, magna cum laude, as well as PhD in political science, both from Harvard University. His recent book is Destroying Libya and the World Order, the three decades U.S. campaign to terminate the Gaddafi Revolution. I want to briefly talk about that because at the time he said it was to destabilize and basically destroy Libya and the rest of Africa for that matter. Um, and then now they call it a great failure that it is a failed state and a big Al-Qaeda ISIS hangout. But the reason I got him on today is he's traveled extensively in the Middle East is also to get into ISIS and the West being behind it and the defense intelligence document that went to Judicial Watch two weeks ago showing the West is running it. I mean, this is just huge information. Saudi Arabia being protected on 9-11, the 28 pages. That's in the London Telegraph today. This stuff's really starting to come out now. And, and just the whole political atmosphere. But first, uh, he is an expert on anthrax and has contact with the experts. And I just wanted to know what he thought about this, this news that hadn't gotten a lot of attention. But it, it's been in the news. Pentagon, number of anthrax shipments accidentally shipped doubles. And now we learn it's all over the U.S., all over the world. Anthrax mistake grows as 51 labs may have received live spores from U.S. military. You know, they tried to blame three or four different patsies for the anthrax attacks in 2001. They said it wasn't weaponized, and of course it was. I mean, what's really going on here? Uh, Professor Francis Boyle, thank you for coming on, sir. Well, thank you, Alex, for having me on. My best to your listening audience. Yes, it, the anthrax, this is a extremely uh, dangerous situation. Uh, all I can comment on is what I've seen so far uh, in the public record. First, Dugway admitted that they were engaging in uh, open air testing of live anthrax there uh, at the uh, Dugway uh, proving ground. They said it was for defensive purposes. Uh, but that's nonsense. Uh, if indeed uh, they just wanted to test uh, uh, costumes or things, they have chambers to do that. The only reason they would be uh, testing live anthrax in, in the open there uh, is uh, part of uh, waging anthrax war. Indeed, there is a uh, federal statute directly on point uh, prohibiting the open air testing of both uh, biological and chemical weapons uh, going back to the earlier uh, uh, offensive warfare preparations at uh, Dugway that killed all those sheep. Although there is a uh, presidential waiver in there, but I don't know if uh, uh, there is a, has been a presidential waiver either by uh, President Bush Jr. or uh, uh, President uh, Obama. Second, uh, if you look at uh, what happened in South Korea, that is extremely uh, uh, dangerous. It's already been reported that the anthrax there uh, was aerosolized, which means uh, it was weaponized. The only reason you aerosolize uh, anthrax is to weaponize it. We know for a fact now, according to their own accounts, that at least 20 people there uh, are taking Cipro uh, or other antibiotics and getting uh, the uh, anthrax shots uh, uh, in combination. So it does appear there was a major uh, incident there in South Korea at that U.S. air base uh, involving uh, live uh, weaponized anthrax. Third, uh, even in accordance with their own account, they sent in this uh, special unit uh, of the United States uh, Air Force uh, to clean up the mess and decontaminate it. This is a well-known uh, unit in the U.S. Air Force that specializes in NBC warfare. 
and in particular, how to contain it, sanitize it, desanitize it, uh, decontaminate it. These are the pros from Dover as far as the uh, uh, Pentagon is concerned. And when they have a very serious uh, situation to contend with, they send in uh, this particular unit. Let me ask you and a big picture. They wear, they wear moon suits. Let me continue, Adam. Yeah. They wear moon suits. All right. When they go in somewhere, they are wearing moon suits, which, again, to me, indicates that this is um, weaponized anthrax we, we are dealing with. And finally, let me relate this back to the uh, anthrax attacks of 2001. That was my question. That, How does this tie together? That we've already discussed quite extensively uh, on your program. Uh, I, you know, my research and others have concluded that that too was uh, super weapons grade uh, anthrax manufactured uh, by a combination of Fort Detrick, the CIA, Battelle, and Dugway. And as I said before uh, on your program, uh, I believe even before this happened that there is a stockpile of weapons-grade anthrax there uh, at Dugway. And that very well could be uh, what, what we're seeing here, too. Uh, I simply do not know if the uh, uh, other shipments to the now 51 labs, and we've got 30 people now uh, on Cipro and or taking uh, anthrax shots. I don't know. I can't say if that's weapon-grade uh, anthrax either. Uh, like uh, uh, South Korea, but it very well could be, Alex. Well, Professor, I'm not a biological weapons expert like you, um, but I've interviewed the experts many times. I've researched it. I mean, they don't just pull weaponized anthrax out of these vaults with these containment units where they have moon suits and pressurized seals and underground buildings, as you know, and then mail it around everywhere. So what is the point of doing this? And even mainstream media says, yeah, it looks like it's, you know, uh, super hardcore anthrax. Then we go back to the original anthrax situation in 2001 with the White House on Cipro. They had to admit that before it even happens. Like a day before it gets mailed out, they all go on it. So it really is a big mystery because they, they tried to blame three patsies and the fourth patsy dies in custody. Uh, you're, I mean, you don't like to speculate, but looking at all this weirdness, why is anthrax getting out again? Why is it breaking now that happened in 2008? Uh, what does all this mean? I mean, it's so crazy. Well, Alex, uh, uh, you're certainly right. Not, none of this goes out of uh, Dugway uh, unless it was sent out on purpose uh, and intentionally. Indeed, uh, General uh, Odierno said this was no uh, accident. So we have to ask, uh, why? And the reason it was done, they did it the last time, uh, the Pentagon, CIA, Dugway, uh, was to terrorize the uh, American people uh, after 9-11-2001 uh, to ram through the uh, uh, USA Patriot Act that was about being held up by um, uh, Senator Daschle and Senator uh, Leahy. And all of a sudden, they were both hit with uh, super weapons grade anthrax, and their uh, opposition disappeared. And we note the uh, so called bogus U.S. Freedom Act uh, just went through uh, 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 Congress uh, this week. After Hastert. The other purpose, the other purpose uh, of that uh, October uh, 2001 uh, anthrax attack was to try, by the neocons, uh, to get us to go to war. Uh, against uh, Iraq, uh, claiming that uh, somehow uh, Iraq was was behind it. And if you look at the uh, international situation today, uh, I don't believe the domestic uh, situation can be uh, uh, disjoined from the international system. Uh, the you know we're on the verge of uh, uh, warfare there uh, with with Ukraine. Um, and the Pentagon and the neoconservatives are, are provoking it now as we speak. If you look at the Associated Press headlines today, uh, the Pentagon, uh, the Secretary of Defense, have threatened to use uh, nuclear weapons against Russia. 
It's uh, incredible. It's I want to go to break and come back with that, uh, Dr. Boyle. But first, j j just briefly, I get the motive. I understand what happened in 2001. Clearly, uh, Pentagon-directed anthrax attacks to ram through the Patriot Act. That's well known, and you helped pioneer exposing that. It's come out. What's the motive now, randomly mailing it all over the place and then getting caught? I mean, what's... Uh, well, first on getting caught, I think there was a whistleblower at work here, just yeah. as there was a whistleblower at work on the uh, those uh, nuclear cruise missiles uh, being sent out of uh, Minot. Uh, Minot Air Force Base. So there's a whistleblower at work here that, that's gotten this uh, message out. But uh, if you recall, Alex, I'm sure you do, uh, General Tommy Franks gave that uh, interview uh, publicly stating that... Uh, in the event of another major terrorist attack on the United States uh, along the lines of 9-11, uh, the military was just going to shut the government down for good. So I think... I if, forgot that quote. You just said it. Let's pull that up. Tommy Frank said in Chigar Aficionado, he, he said, he said, we're going to just take over the government next time there's an attack. And that's the plan. And, and, and it's not the military taking over the coup. It's the coup through the military. And we're just another third world nation. Unbelievable. Dr. Boyle, stay there. See, he just reminded me of that. I, we're the ones that, like, a listener called us and said, have you seen Cigar Aficionado? You know, things I'd forgotten about. Like the Cigar Aficionado that was basically Tommy Franks on the cover promoting martial law. Because the first few years after 9-11, they would go, well, of course we torture people. Uh, and, you know, of course we're going to you know, do this and that. Of course the NSA spies on you. He said, quote, of a terrorist massive casualty producing event will occur somewhere in the Western world. It may be in the United States of America that causes our population to question our own constitution and begin to militarize our country in order to avoid a repeat of another mass casualty producing event. And, of course, they would stage it to take over. Then enters Jade Helm, all the admissions of government gearing up to go after anybody that doesn't go along with the takeover. I've never seen such movement and preparation and starting wars with Russia, China, you name it. And you know, Dr. Boyle is a world expert. I mean, he, he went to the top globalist PhD, groomed by them, wrote weapons treaties, was being vetted to go to the, and then he you know, basically exposed it. I mean, as a guy that studied this a while, what do you think about all the preparations that are being made? I've never seen such ominous behavior. Well, that's correct. It, it, again, uh, I, I'm afraid the, what we're seeing is the uh, uh, neocon, neoconservative uh, agenda here being continued to uh, pursue uh, uh, under Obama. Uh, we're coming close to uh, uh, warfare uh, with Russia. Uh, sort of like a, uh, a reverse Cuban Missile Crisis. And at that point, I think the American people were, are going to wake up and say, what, what's going on here? Why are we on the verge of Russia? And I suspect then we're going to see uh, uh, anthrax being used uh, to scaremonger the uh, American people uh, into supporting a, a, a war against Russia. And China, too, as you know, we're supporting this uh, overt uh, sure. military uh, Abe, uh, who uh, uh, it has these outlandish claims to this Chinese, these Chinese islands of uh, Dayu, and uh, both uh, Clinton and Obama and Kerry have all said, well, we're prepared to go to war over these islands, even though uh, we do not recognize Japanese sovereignty over these islands. So, uh, you know, any, anything could set off uh, a war with Russia and or uh, China. And again, read today's Associated Press report where uh, Carter and the Pentagon are threatening the first use of nuclear weapons uh, against Russia. They know that this is uh, extremely destabilizing, and that's why they did it. You have massive war games uh, now uh, going on uh, all over uh, Eastern Europe and, and in the uh, uh, surrounding seas, the uh, uh, Baltic, the Black Sea. Uh, and in the air. So, so sure, any anything could go wrong. Anything could set this up, off. It's you know, it's sort of like the uh, uh, origins of the uh, First World War, if, if you read it. And that exactly. I think, is probably where the anthrax comes in. That that when finally the American people pay attention to what's going on, uh, I'm afraid we might be hit by uh, anthrax. Sure.
I also want to say a, a word uh, in support of your governor down there in uh, in Texas. I, I don't know him personally, uh, but I think uh, this is a wise precaution uh, in light of the uh, uh, Jade 15 uh, maneuvers uh, where to, to put the Texas National Guard on alert. Um, or anywhere these uh, uh, U.S. military forces go and exercise, it's basically a zone of de facto martial law. So we really don't know what what could happen here, except in the drafting of the Constitution at Philadelphia, our founders firmly believed that the most dire threat to the existence of the Republic was a standing army, which is why they did not create one. Although they did create a standing uh, Navy, they only gave Congress the power to create a standing army, and the Republic was to be defended by the state militias. The, the sure, yeah, I mean, and, and in modern parlance, you just don't have troops quartered among you. You don't bring your military into the country because that's what Caesar did, bringing the troops across the Rubicon. I mean, we know where this story goes. We're going to go to break. And, and we also have Northern Command, which, as you know, was set up after 9-11. Uh, yes. And they're treating the continental United States as well as Canada as a military command. Yep. So it's, it's, it's an extremely dangerous um, situation, not only uh, war abroad with Russia, which appears more likely now than China, but even it, it could happen with China. Totally insane. Uh, uh, sir, I want to ask you when we come back, we got a few more minutes with you, uh, what that might look like with Russia. We'll go over that incredible AP report where they're going to say they're going to move the missiles into Europe. I mean, it, it, it is pure madness, and Obama's playing golf and Kerry's crashing his bicycle. We're on the moon. We launch our team to cover Bilderberg 2015 from the Alps in Austria. And basically, it's the TPP. It's the people that run the TPP that run all these unelected, unaccountable boards, all these globalists that the power is being transferred to. It's worldwide fascism. They control the left. They control the right. We're in deep trouble. But the neocons, the Straussian neocons from Chicago Business School and Harvard, have written books. They're on record. PNAC, Pax Americana. But not a real American empire of ideas and freedom. You know, they're velvet empires. No, a militarized empire of tyranny. And they believe in the end justifies the means. Well, the truth is they're just evil. And they talk about nuclear war with Russia, survivable wars with China, uh, national um, paramilitary stabilization forces in the U.S. And they wrote all this stuff in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Now they're doing it. And they tried it when Reagan was in. Not so much Reagan, people running it. The Rex 84, they had hearings in Congress about a plan for martial law during stage crises. It was in the Miami Herald and rounding people up. It all goes back to L.L. Lemnon, sir, and people that Kennedy and Eisenhower basically fired. This has been going on forever. On the stage terror attacks and take over. It's the oldest trick in the book. And now, here's the headline, U.S. might deploy missiles in Europe to counter Russia. And then they go into talking about a first strike, which they say is U.S. policy. When they say U.S., this means the mad men running us. But I study Hitler attacking Russia or Napoleon or other megalomaniacs of history. They always end up believing they're invincible and going too far. And even if we could beat Russia two or three times over, you can't beat their counterstrike. I mean, we can't beat China. No one wins a nuclear war. This is insane. And you can see the real buildup. You can feel the energy. You can see the preparations. This is different. And, and, and I know Dr. Boyle is agreeing with us, Francis Boyle. Sir, for like 10 minutes or so, then I understand you have to go back to your students and your work. To confirm what you were saying, which is this. I, uh, I was an undergraduate at, at the University of Chicago and went through that same uh, Straussian program with all the rest of them, including Wolfowitz, who was there, all of them were there. And uh, Strauss had just retired, but I, I studied with his uh, right-hand man, uh, Cropsy. What we have to understand is that Strauss's mentor and guru and sponsor in Germany uh, was Carl Schmidt, the uh, diehard Nazi law professor who justified every hideous atrocity Hitler and the Nazis inflicted on everyone, 
including the Jews, which is why uh, Ben Strauss broke with them at that point. But these neoconservatives are neo-Nazis. This is a neo-Nazi cabal here, uh, right at the center of power uh, in the uh, United States government, in the Pentagon, in the White House, in the CIA, uh, who are carrying out what you correctly called seems to be uh, Nazi policies. And that is correct. We, we have a Nazi philosophy uh, at work here. Uh, they've spent the past generation uh, trying to uh, infiltrate uh, the academic world. Uh, I've been fighting these people for ever since I was at the University of Chicago. And uh, uh, we see now law professors at elite law schools like the University of Chicago uh, openly uh, advocating uh, Schmidt. We even now see uh, professors on the so-called left uh, citing uh, Schmidt without mentioning he's a Nazi. Uh, it's very similar to the uh, uh, left's uh, fascination with Heidegger, who, as you know, uh, used to lecture uh, in his uh, uh, Nazi uniform and uh, fired his uh, teacher and mentor, Jasper, uh, because he was Jewish. So these, you are correct, we're dealing here with, with a Nazi philosophy and a Nazi cabal uh, going back to Strauss and Schmidt. Sure, and then just look at Bush's lawyers, uh, John Yu and Alberto Gonzalez, saying we can bury people alive, we can rip their toenails out, we can cut their, cut their genitals off. Uh, I mean, these people just, just think they're God, and now this craziness is continuing into Obama. Uh, it's just sheer insanity. Right, and we see Newland uh, in charge of the provocations against Russia uh, over Ukraine. This is a matter of public record. She orchestrated that coup d'etat, uh, overthrew the democratically elected uh, uh, government of Yanukovych. Uh, she's a neocon. She used to work for Cheney. Uh, well, the so, main group in the party that they turned power over to when they threw the elected group over are neo-Nazis who actually heil Hitler. That is correct. If you look at all the reports uh, coming out of Ukraine, uh, these uh, paramilitary organizations uh, are Nazi, uh, Nazi uh, direct descendants of uh, uh, Nazi formations and movements during World War II. And now Obama put uh, 300 U.S. military trainers in Ukraine. Uh, uh, they're there now, allegedly to train the Ukrainian National Guard, not the Ukrainian army. Well, who is the Ukrainian National Guard? It is all these Nazi, neo-Nazi paramilitary uh, uh, formations. The ones carrying out atrocities. So what's the grand strategy, or this, or is this political insanity? Because then you've got the open funding of Al-Qaeda and ISIS, as if we don't know it. But then defense intelligence leaks that we're doing it. So we have leaks on the anthrax, leaks on Al-Qaeda. It sounds like a lot of good people in the government are really doing the right thing. Well, I think so, that there are some what appears to be principled people in uh, the Pentagon, maybe the CIA, uh, I don't know, uh, who are leaking uh, this type of information to the American people. So at least we have some idea uh, of what the plans are uh, behind the scenes. But now today, the Associated Press, you have the Pentagon threatening uh, Russia with a first strike of nuclear weapons. Well, that, that is deliberately destabilizing. How do you think the Russians uh, are, are going to respond to this? They, they very well could go, go on alert again. Uh, I really don't know. It's just totally but insane. But, but meanwhile, Obama's well, playing golf. Not, they're, they're crashing bicycles. I, I mean, is there a method of the madness, or have they gone insane? Well, again, it, it's the old debate about uh, Hitler. Was Hitler insane or not? And I, you know, I've read a lot of Hitler and the Langer uh, biography and whatever. Uh, I just think what, what we've seen here for the past generation it is a Nazi philosophy and Nazi uh, operatives uh, at work at the highest level uh, of the United States government, and, and that's what's going on. If you want to call it insane, fine. I don't know where that gets us. But I think, you know, if we study the history of the Nazis, and you pointed out their attack on Russia, 
uh, you know, the, the Russians will fight us to the death. If I, I've been over to uh, to Stalingrad, uh, they they even invited me to uh, uh, honor the uh, victims and the defenders of Stalingrad when I was over there, which I did in in a ceremony. The Russians will fight us to death. There's no question about it. And it, it, if these uh, um, Straussians, these neocons, believe that the Russians are going to back down, I I, I think they're wrong. Well, yeah, uh, in closing, shifting gears over the Middle East, uh, these, these Salafists, these, these Al-Qaeda type folks are the people Hitler funded again. And I'm not saying it's a Nazi conspiracy, but clearly they took the Nazi blueprint uh, that they got at Nuremberg, and that's even the 68 Gun Control Act was actually that change. That, I mean, that's on record. They just took not just the Straussians, but so many others. I mean, we, our, our troops dress like it. They wear the Kurtzel helmet. Uh, we call it homeland, Reichland. Uh, they are just basically doing the, the Fuhrer precept that the executive branch can do whatever it wants. Uh, it just sounds like a bunch of diseased lawyers came over and just taught a bunch of sick students this, and, and, and they bought into the power trip, uh, you know, sitting at their knee. And then you add uh, some of the uh, folks that fled Russia, uh, the Trotskyites, who then also went from being communist to fascist sitting un, uh, you know, there at the Nazi knee. Uh, it is just sick. And you got 36,000 top Nazis brought over because they would autocratically follow orders to run a bunch of agencies, not just NASA. Uh, it, it, it is like, I'm not saying it's a Nazi uh, conspiracy, but it is like we got smallpox from the Nazis and now we have it. It's like we have that power mad disease, that autocratic control freak disease and that's why i call it a mental illness because you know if you love your kids even if you're a maniac you don't want to start a war with people with ten thousand nuclear weapons uh, i mean it's just it's just they just seem like they have death wishes or something uh dr boyle well uh the nazis did too you know when uh, what could i say when uh, hitler uh uh invaded uh, the soviet union he should have studied his history and he didn't so uh there you go and unfortunately, uh, we're uh, dealing with a group of uh, people uh, who believe that they are above history. Uh, that very famous statement, we're an empire and we make history and then you can catch up to it. Carl Rove. By the time you've caught up to it, uh, Carl World <laughs> down there in Texas, uh, we'll make some more history again. So that is the uh, uh, mentality. Uh, I've seen it here in operation uh, ever since I entered the University of Chicago in 1968 and then went to Harvard. Uh, as I said before in your program, I, I went through the exact same Harvard PhD program that produced both Kissinger and Brzezinski and Huntington uh, before me. Uh, and that's the way they train you to think uh, at Harvard, just like the Nazis, right? Well, I just hope cooler minds prevail, and I'm not glorifying the military leadership, but compared to these people, it was Dempsey who went to Obama a couple of years ago and said, no, we're not going to knock over Assad with the military because the troops won't go along with it. Uh, it seems to be the soldiers that have been in combat who know that this isn't fun. It seems to be chicken hawks who've never fought that think it's cute to play war. And, and just you know, reading what Hitler actually wrote near the end of World War II, he, he followed Napoleon. And I know you know this, Dr. Boyle, but visited his grave, all that. He thought he was above history. He, he knew to how, you know, why Napoleon failed. And he believed Operation Barbarossa would, he was in competition with Napoleon. And Hitler thought he was better than Napoleon, basically. Right. And, and uh, also, you're right about Dempsey. It was Dempsey who told uh, Obama uh, they were not going to attack Syria. So at that point, then, uh, uh, Obama and his CIA people, remember, Obama's been a lifelong CIA asset, they then uh, activated uh, ISIS. And we now, I said that uh, right at the beginning. And that's where uh, ISIS, ISIL, this Islamic State come from. When, when they couldn't do an outright military attack as military opposition, uh, they then uh, 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 activated uh, ISIS. All these guys uh, were in U.S. custody uh, in in Iraq, and we turn them uh, to our to our favor, to our benefit. Now the uh, uh, Defense Intelligence Agency uh, is admitting that. So, so you're perfectly correct. Yes. Well, I talked to a lot of military folks, retired generals, recently retired colonels, uh, lieutenant colonels, and other folks, and they're all completely freaked out. They said the military is falling apart. They won't even fix equipment. They won't even give them health care. 
it's all just a bunch of delusional you know, g g guys up there who think they're invincible because they have Harvard degrees. No offense to you. You know them. You've said that. On power trips, believing they control reality, like Carl Rove said, it just sounds like megalomania to me. Caligula all over again. Dr. Boyle, thank you so much. Where's the best place for people to find your latest book? Uh, if you just uh, Google my name, all my books will come up. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you uh, coming on the broadcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. My best to uh, your audience and everyone down there in Texas. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it is. It is just totally insane. I mean, I, I, the time we're living in, if we survive this, we're going to look back and just go, what was wrong with us?